So hi everyone. A warm good morning to one and all. My name is Archana. I'm a child enthusiast and an educator. Today, as a part of our Triple R program, we'll be discussing current affairs. So I know you may be familiar with current affairs topics. I hope you all read the newspaper and the PIB regularly. And have you gone through the compilation or monthly compilation? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Fine. So, this will be a pre-storming session, otherwise a prelims brainstorming session. We will be discussing the current affairs only in prelims angle. Okay, mains angle will be discussed after the prelims examination. This is only in prelims point of view we will be discussing the topics. So, I have classified the topics into government schemes, international relations, science and technology and art and culture. Today we will be discussing these four topics. So, totally there are 50 topics. I do not know how the time will go. We will see how it works and we will stop when you are fine with it and when it is okay okay so let's start our topic so first discussion so our first topic of discussion is i can change here right okay government schemes so you all know that government schemes is an important topic for your prelims examination as far as prelims is concerned you can expect around one or two questions directly from government schemes so, whenever you study a government scheme, you should focus on two, three aspects. One is why it is in the news. For all the topics, you should know why it is in the news. Secondly, the ministry associated with the scheme. Third is the objective and salient features. Fourth is if any eligibility or exclusion criteria is there for the scheme, you should also note that. So, that is with respect to government schemes. So, I hope the intro part is clear with respect to government schemes. See, all your doubts will be clarified at the end of the session. Otherwise, we can't move fastly. So, that's why all your doubts will be cleared at the end of the session. I will be interacting with you. Don't worry. I will ask some questions so that it will be an interactive manner only we will be running the session. Okay. So, government scheme. See, the first scheme. Pratan Mandri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. So, what I said first, you should know the ministry. See, this question was asked in KS prelims earlier. So, similarly, in UPSC NDA examination also, one question was asked from this PM Kaushal Vikas Yojana. See, what is Kaushal? Skill. Okay. See, whenever you study a scheme, mostly by the name itself, you will get the ministry. That is the logic. In most cases, from the name of the scheme itself, you will get the ministry. So, here the ministry is Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. See, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. This is not working. Okay, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. So, what you should focus here is that Pradhan Mandri Kaushal Vigas Yojana 3.0 is recently launched by the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. So, here you should focus here that it aims to empower employable skills in youth okay, and to provide 300 type of skill sets. That is the importance of PM Kaushal Vikas Yojana 3.0. So, here what you should focus here is, this is a flagship schemes which came under the Skill India Mission in 2015. So, that is important. It came in the year 2015 under which, which mission? Skill India Mission. This Skill India Mission is very important. It can be asked in mains point of view also, but I am not going into deep here. So, that is with respect to PM Kaushal Vikas Yojana. And see, it is launched in almost 777 districts, 28 states and all. And implementation, this is a centrally sponsored scheme. So, while studying a scheme, if it is spe specially mentioned that it is a central sector or centrally sponsored scheme, you should also note about that. This is a centrally sponsored scheme. Two components are there, centrally sponsored state uh, like doing the scheme and centrally sponsored state implementing the scheme. Centrally sponsored, central implementing the scheme and centrally sponsored state implementing the scheme. And features, it envisages training of 8 lakh candidates over a period of 2020-21. As I said earlier, it is skill imparting scheme. So, it is focusing more on learner centric or trainer centric manner. Okay. So, that is with respect to PM Kaushal Vikas Yojana. As I said earlier, what all things you should focus? The ministry. The ministry is simple because Kaushal, from the name itself, you will get it right. And secondly, the objective. See, one-liner objective will do for prelims point of view. Just a one-liner objective. And any exclusion criteria or eligibility criteria, you should know. Here, youth, all youth are included. So, no need to study the exclusion or eligibility criteria particularly. So, that is with respect to Pratan Mandri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. Clear, right? Okay. 
Moving on to the next scheme, rooftop solar scheme. See, as we all know that for the past few years, we have moved towards renewable energy sources. See, what are renewable energy sources? which can be renewed again and again. So, solar energy, wind energy, all these are renewable energy sources. So, the name itself, rooftop solar scheme means that it aims at building some solar energy related stuff. So, this ministry is what ministry? Ministry of new and renewable energy. So, ministry is clear, ministry of new and renewable energy. So, here the residential consumer has to pay the cost of rooftop solar plants, very important. It can be asked in a statement manner. Here, the residential consumer, okay, residential consumer has to pay the cost. And regarding the objective, see, this is really important. It achieved, to achieve a cumulative capacity of 40,000 megawatts from rooftop solar energy. So, that is the objective of the scheme. Again, important, who is implementing the scheme? Who is implementing the scheme? The state discounts. The state discounts is implementing the scheme. So, that is all with respect to rooftop solar scheme. See, I have included other important schemes related to solar energy. One is International Solar Alliance. Second is One Sun, One World, One Grid Initiative. Third is National Solar Mission. So, International Solar Alliance, you may be knowing. Where is the headquarters of International Solar Alliance? Gurugram. Very good. It is in Gurugram. So, it was launched in the year 2015 by the Honorable Prime Minister of India, Modi and President of France. Okay. So, in this scheme, I will tell you, in this scheme, all the countries can be members. Very important. All the countries can be members, but voting rights are provided only for tropical countries. Okay. Solar countries, otherwise called as Surya Putras. Even Modi defined it as Surya Putras. So, voting rights are given only for which countries? Surya Putras are tropical countries, but all countries can be members of this particular scheme. International Solar Alliance, it is a very important scheme for India. Questions can be expected in prelims point of view and very important, it was launched in the year 2015. Okay. And once in one world, one grid initiative, it is recently launched in COP26, which was held in Glasgow. Okay. And next is National Solar Mission. It is an earlier program and it is a part of National Action Plan on Climate Change. Eight projects comes under National Action Plan of Climate Change. Hope you all know that. We will discuss it in the coming classes also. Okay. Next is Shram Shakti Portal. Shram Shakti Portal. See, which ministry? Ministry of Tribal Affairs has launched Shram Shakti, a national migration support portal. So, one liner you have to study. It is a national migration support portal. National Migration Support, okay. For who? For the tribal workers, for the tribal migrant workers. So, when this scheme is implemented, these tribal workers are connected to the existing welfare schemes and would help the national and state government in formulation, help in formulation of new schemes for the tribal workers. See, I'll share the PPTs, okay. I'll share the PPTs. You may please note down the important points only regarding a brief kind of thing. Otherwise, I'll share the PPT. Anyway, I'll share the material with you. So, that is Shram Shakti portal. Shram Shakti. So, ministry. See, here ministry is quite difficult. By the name, you won't get the ministry right. So, here you have to study the ministry. You have to conceptualize the thing and to study the ministry so that the ministry is what? Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Really important. Moving on further, as I said, the objectives are simple to smooth the formulation of state and national level programs and it will empower the working of migrant tribal workers in their employment generation and income generation. Fine. Clear. So, we studied three schemes. What are all they? First is PM Kaushal Vikas Yojana. Second, solar roof top scheme. Then third, Shram Shakti portal. Next is Mission Indra Dhanush. Very, very important scheme, Mission Indra Dhanush. See, recently government has come up with Intensified Mission Indra Dhanush 3.0. So, before that, we have to know about what is Mission Indra Dhanush. So, Mission Indra Dhanush is an immunization or vaccination program aims at vaccinating 2-year-old, below 2-year-old children and all pregnant women. Okay, that is the object of Mission Indra Dhanush and 12 diseases are covered, 12 vaccine preventable diseases are covered. You have to study the name of all these diseases because in prelims statement wise questions can be expected or like uh, from the given below statements or like the from the given below list identify the diseases which are covered under 
Mission Indradanush. Like that, you can expect question. And however, vaccination against Japanese encephalitis and hemophilus influenza type B is being provided in selected districts of the country also. Okay. So that is with respect to Mission Indradanush. See, in Mission Indradanush 3.0, what it is aimed at is See, in order to reach the unreached or those who are not covered under the mission Indradhanush 1 and 2 is covered under mission 3.0, mission Indradhanush 3.0. So, what is the important aspect you should study here? The important 12 vaccine preventable diseases, those who are covered under the scheme. 12 diseases you have to study and apart from that, the mission Indradhanush 3.0 will have 2 rounds this year and which will be conducted in 250 pre-identified districts and all. All these can be just read and you can just read it out. No need to study and all. What you should focus here is Mission Indradhanush is a vaccination program, very important. And next is regarding the diseases covered under this particular scheme. Okay, that's all. And moving on further, we have Saksham portal. Saksham portal. Saksham. Saksham. What is Saksham? Saksham. See, you don't go with the name here. See. Shramik Shakti Manch Job Portal, that is Saksham. Shramik Shakti Manch Job Portal. Who are Shramiks? Shramiks, one who do some work, labor, labors or like workers, they are called Shramiks. So, this is a dynamic portal for jobs, mapping of skills of Shramiks or workers and it is done by Ministry of Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises. So, which ministry? Ministry of MSME, Ministry of MSME, it is under the Ministry of MSME. See, this is an all India portal, it will facilitate creation of 10 lakh blue collar jobs, it will eliminate blue uh, like middlemen and labor contractors and all and important thing is they will be providing ID card also for this workers. So, which ministry? Ministry of MSME. See, here and all as I mentioned earlier, you do not have to study deep or like you do not have to study in an analytical manner as far as prelims is concerned. And in mains also these topics will not be asked. In mains Ayushman Bharat scheme, important flagship schemes, analysis and critical perspective you should study. Apart from that in prelims point of view, just study the ministry objective. Then any exclusion criteria or eligibility criteria is there, you should study that also. Very simple. Okay. We have 20 schemes like this. Moving on further. Next is Bhuvan portal. What is Bhuvan? Bhuvan means, Bhuvan means earth, earth, okay, Bhuvan means earth, Bhuvan, the name Bhuvan is earth. So, this is a program of Indian Space Research Organization or ISRO and Map My India have partnered to come up with an indigenous geospatial portal called as Bhuvan. So, what is the purpose of this portal? In order to map the geospatial data, that's all. In order to map the geospatial data, the ISRO has come up with a program called as Bhuvan. Have you heard about Gagan? What is Gagan? GPS aided geo augmented navigation system. What is NAVIC or IRNSS? See, both these are navigational systems again developed by ISRO. We will study it in later. Here, seven satellites are there. We will study it later. And in Gagan, we will study it in security and science and technology part. In Gagan, we are using GPS aided, it is GPS aided. So, GPS whether it is indigenous, USA. USA, no it is not indigenous. See come to here, here Bhuvan portal is an indigenous portal. See indigenized names or like Indian names are there, most probably it will be an indigenous scheme. That is the logic. So, that is with respect to Bhuvan portal. See it will assure more privacy also because it is built by ISRO, our own firm. Okay. Moving on further. The next scheme is Sati. What is meant by Sati? Sati? Friend or a companion. Okay. But that logic you won't get it right. It comes under Ministry of Power. It comes under the Ministry of Power. So, Ministry of Power in association with BEE, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. It is again coming under Ministry of Power. So, it has developed a management information system. So, what is Sati? It is a management information system. Miss management information system. And state-wise actions on annual targets and headways on energy efficiency. That is the full form of Sati. You do not have to study the full form also. State-wise actions on annual targets and headways on energy efficiency. Sati. So, which ministry Sati? 
So, it is companion, but you would not get it right by the logic, it is Ministry of Power. Clear, right? Moving on further, so regarding the benefits, I will explain to you. It will capture the physical and financial status progress of energy efficiency activities and it will facilitate a real time monitoring of the progress of implementation of energy related systems. So, you do not have to, you must know it logically, you must know the concept, that is all. It is for power saving energy related thing, Sati. So, it comes under the Ministry of Power. Moving on further, we have Parivar Pehichan Patra. See, Patra means paper, Parivar means family. This is not an all India scheme. First of all, it is not launched by government of India. It is by the Haryana government. Very important. Haryana government, okay. This type of important schemes can be asked. For example, Cyber Dom is the project of which state? Kerala. So, Keralites, we are Keralites, so we may be knowing. The North Indians may not be knowing. So, they will consider it as a pan India scheme. No, it is a project of state government, Kerala state government. Similarly, Parivar Pahichan Patra is a project of Haryana government and it was formally launched in the year 2019. But the problem is, problem before that I will tell you the purpose, it aims at faceless and paperless service delivery. Okay. And each family is considered as a single unit and gets a 8 digit unique number. So, regarding the privacy concern and all, it was in news recently. So, Parivar Pahichan Patra is related to which ministry, not which ministry, which government, it is related to Haryana government. It aims at paperless and faceless governance. Okay. So, Parivar means family, family ID card as provided and this ID card are linked to independent schemes, policies, measures, etc. So, that is with respect to Parivar Pahichan Patra. Are you able to follow me? Fine, right? If you have any issue, you can raise a point, okay. And all the doubts part, I will clear after the session. So, that it will be lagging and the online students find it's difficult. That's why. And if you want me to explain in Malayalam, you can definitely ask me also, okay. And next is local area development scheme. See, we have MP Lard scheme. You might have heard of MP Lard scheme. Similar to that, in state level, the MLAs has have the scheme called as local area development scheme. MLA, local area development scheme. So, recently, Rajasthan government has approved a proposal to provide 3 crore each from MLA LAD program. So, it is a state version of central government scheme, MP LAD scheme. So, here, MLAs do not receive any funds directly. Very, very important. MLAs do not receive any funds directly. The government transfers it directly to the local authorities. Very important statement wise questions can be expected. See, they will give you that the MLAs receive the fund and they will transmit it to the respective local authorities. Is it correct? No. The MLAs does not receive it at first instant. It is received by the local authorities directly. If that kind of statement is there, that statement is true or right. So, objective to create local need based infrastructure, to create assets, to remove regional imbalances, etc. Moving on further. We have Samrit scheme, Samrit scheme. Here also Samrit means something related to prosperity, Samrit and all. So, here also by the name you will not get the ministry. Very important, you will not get the ministry. So, the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology has launched the Startup Accelerator Mighty, Mighty Ministry. Okay. The scheme name is Startup Accelerator of Mighty for Product Innovation Development and Growth. See, even I do not know the name fully. It is okay. Samrit program. You just remember it as Samrit program. That will do. It. What is the aim? To create a conducive platform to Indian software product startups. So, it aims at startups. Samrit entrepreneurship. It aims at startups and entrepreneurship and it will provide an investment of up to 40 lakh to the startup based on current valuation and growth stage of the startup. So, what amount? 40 lakhs. Samrit scheme. So, which ministry? Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Samrit program. Okay. Next is SPIN scheme, SPIN, okay. So, ministry associated is Khade Village Industry Commission, the respective authority. It comes under which ministry? KYIC? No. No, MSME, okay. It comes under MSME. It comes under the ministry of MSME. And what is the full form? Strengthening the potential of India scheme. Strengthening the potential of India scheme. And it is aimed at sustainable development by creating self-employment which is aligned with Pradhan Mandri's commitment to job to every hand. Spin. Job to every hand. Okay. Our heart may come. Job to every hand. 
So features, see it is an important scheme, questions can be accept, expected. One is it is a no subsidy scheme, important it is a no subsidy scheme and no financial burden on the exchequer is there. Beneficiaries can repay the loans in easy installments. And see have you heard about Pradhan Mandri Mudra Yojana? What is the purpose of Pradhan Mandri Mudra Yojana? Loans to MSMEs. How many part are there? Subdivisions. What are all they? Shishu. Kishore, Tarun, yes, Shishu, Tarun, Kishore, sorry, Shishu, Tarun, Kishore. So, here it comes under Pradhan Mandri Shishu Mudra Yojana. The funding is given under Pradhan Mandri Shishu Mudra Yojana. So, that is also important. Moving on further, we have Pradhan Mandri Daksh scheme. Daksh, okay. So, see here, it comes under the Ministry of Social Justice. It comes under the Ministry of, see here also we can't go by the name logic, you have to study the Ministry. The Ministry is Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment and it is implemented from the year 2020-2021 and eligible target groups are provided with skill development training. So what is the purpose of the program? In order to provide skill development training. See who are eligible, here eligibility criteria is there. Scheduled caste, OBC, economically backward sessions, denotified tribes, sanitation workers, waste pickers, etc. are included. So, you will get a statement like Pradhan Mandri Daksh scheme is aimed at providing skill development to all the section of the society. That kind of question. Is that true? No. It is not giving for all the sections of the society. It is giving only for SC, OBC, economically backward, vulnerable sections. These are all vulnerable section. It is giving this training only to the vulnerable section. That is the importance. Clear? You are following me, right? Okay. Next is Bharat Gaurav scheme. Very simple. Bharat Gaurav scheme is implemented by Indian Railways. You might have heard of the scheme. It is implemented by Indian Railways. So it is a theme based tourist circuit trains on the lines of Ramayana Express and can be run by private or state owned operators. So it is implemented by Indian Railways, very simple scheme. It is aimed at tourist, more on tourist centric, but it is implemented by who? Not Ministry of Tourism, it is by Indian Railways. Bharat Gaurav scheme, implemented by Indian Railways. Moving further, we have India Energy Dashboard version 2.0. Any idea who is implementing? Don't look and say <laughs> India Energy. See by the name, India Energy Dashboard version. See, it is Niti Ayuk. Okay, by the name, you won't get it right. It is Niti Ayuk. The recently, the government's think tank, Niti Ayuk. Niti Ayuk. What is the full form of Niti Ayuk? National Institution for Transforming India. Which year it was launched? 2015. 2015. Okay, it replaced erstwhile Planning Commission. Who is the chairperson of Niti Ayuk? Prime Minister. Okay, you should know the basics of Niti Ayog. Okay. So, it is an endeavor to provide single window access to energy data for the country and the Central Electric Authority, Coal Control Organization, all these data are controlled by this India Energy Dashboard version 2.0. And keep in mind that it is launched by Niti Ayog. Niti Ayog. Is that fine? You should know about Niti Ayog. Okay. You have studied it in economics and quality, I guess. Both in economics and quality. See, what type of body is Niti Ayog? constitutional or statutory or extra constitutional what type of body extra constitutional very good extra constitutional moving on further shunya campaign what does mean by shunya zero okay shunya means zero so recently niti ayog and rocky mountain institute again niti ayog and rmi indias have launched the shunya campaign shunya campaign so what is shunya here what shunya means to promote zero pollution delivery. It aims at promoting zero pollution delivery vehicles by working with consumers and the industry. So, the focus is more on electric vehicles, zero emission polluter vehicles. So, Shunya campaign. Shunya, shunya means zero. Shunya in Hindi, Shunya means zero. So, zero pollution is the target to accelerate the adoption of electric vehicles and to create consumer awareness about the benefits of zero pollution and all is the objective of the scheme. It's campaign, not the scheme, campaign. So, Shunya campaign, here also we won't think about Niti Ayog first, right? Niti Ayog won't come in our mind first. So, here it is implemented by Niti Ayog. Fine, right? You are able to follow? Yes. Next is One Health Consortium. Again, say the ministry. By logic, See, by logic, we will say it as Ministry of Health, but it is not so. It is done by Department of Biotechnology and it comes under which ministry? 
science and technology. So, One Health Consortium is under the Ministry of Science and Technology. This is also very important, can be asked, okay. Very, very important, it can be asked. Please note it down or like when I give the material, keep a note on this. So, here it is one of the biggest One Health program launched by India in post-COVID times. It consists of 27 organization led by DBT and it use of diagnostic tests led by DBT and it envisages carrying out surveillance of important bacterial, viral infections, zoonotic infections, etc. So, One Health Consortium is related to zoonotic diseases, its testing, all these things. So, who is launching One Health Consortium? Ministry of Science and Technology in that DBT in particular. See, so, it's not Ministry of Health. One Health, we'll think it like Ministry of Health, but no, it is Ministry of Science and Technology. Clear? Moving on further, I Familia. Okay, I Familia. See, here you have to study it. It is launched by Interpol. Interpol. Okay, Interpol is Interpol. So, recently Interpol has launched a new global database called as I Familia. See, it is a global database for identifying missing person. So, here it is based on international DNA matching. They will do that. And implementation, it is based on principle of humanitarianism. Significance what? This cold cases can be solved. This uh, millions of calculations in short space time can be resolved. All these things. It is launched by Interpol. See, just here and all, just the implementing authority is important. It is Interpol, Interpol, just Interpol, that will do, objectives and all for case, like what, investigation purposes, DNA identification, all those things, okay. You should know the basics of DNA, basics of RNA, in biology aspects, in science and technology aspects, we will be discussing in the next class, you should know the basics, okay. Very important, basic biology questions can be expected in prelims point of view, apart from the current affairs angle. Moving on further, next is e Shram portal, e Shram portal. Shram, Shram, Shramik, Shram. So, Ministry is Ministry of Labour and Employment. Here, to register 38 crore unorganized workers such as construction labourers, all these are, they are all given an kind of insurance kind of thing. So, what is happening here is, if a worker is registered in Ishram portal, if he met with an accident, he will be eligible for 2 lakh on death or permanent disability and 1 lakh on partial disability. So, somewhat kind of an insurance kind of thing, Eastram portal is giving and implementation, governments in states, UTs will con conduct this registration process. So, what is the eligibility criteria? Here, eligibility criteria is important. Unorganized workers, is it covering organized workers? No, very important. Unorganized workers are included here. That is labors, migrant workforce, street vendors, domestic workers, etc. Fine, clear, right? Moving on further, we have Natrex. Natrex, here also the name is quite uh, what tricky, tricky name. So, here the Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises. The Ministry is Ministry of Heavy Industries and Public Enterprises has come up with scheme. It is a high speed track in Indore, Natrex. Okay. It comes under NATRIP, National Automatic Testing and Research and Development Infrastructure Power Project. NATRIP, it is one of the state of the art automotive testing. Okay, automotive testing. So, uh, it is a speed track, just keep in mind that it is a speed track, that is all. State of the art testing, R&D infrastructure in the country, all these will be boosted by Natrix. Just important, just have a look at it, that is all, not so important. Next is Smile Scheme, Smile. Which ministry it will be? Smile, Smile Scheme, Smile. See, in order to bring Smile in, this beggars, transgenders, uh, earlier we had a scheme, it merged the beggars and transgender, now it is called as a SMILE scheme. It is a central sector scheme for comprehensive rehabilitation of persons engaged in begging. Okay, in order to bring SMILE in beggars, that is why it is called as SMILE scheme. See, vulnerable sections, almost all sections are included under which ministry? Ministry of Social Justice. That is the logic here. Here the ministry is Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, SMILE. Support for marginalized individuals for livelihood and enterprises. That is the full form. Full form not important, just logic wise you just connect it. It comes under Ministry of Social Justice, Smile Scheme. Okay. So, that is with respect to government scheme. We have studied 20 government schemes. 20 government schemes we have studied. Is it fine? Okay, almost we took 45 minutes I think. Government schemes is fine. Moving on further, next is science and technology. See, we started at 10.45, right? 
10 45 so 11 45 12 45 two hours so next is science and technology see science and technology first of all uh, let me brief it okay it is very difficult to rub the board okay let it be see science and technology few important aspects are there similar to defense technology space technology electronics and communication technology daily life sciences there basic sciences there so many topics are there but i have taken 10 topics which is from current affairs see for for example defense you should know about the integrated guided missile development program and about patna missiles prithvi akni trishul nag agash have you heard about it defense missiles what is a ballistic missile? What is a cruise missile? All these aspects will be discussed in the science and technology part. And all the important uh, programs of NASA, ISRO also will be discussing in the science and technology part. And apart from that, few important topics which is in current affairs will be discussed today. Is it fine? Okay. So, what happened? Okay. See, first is, I don't know to spell it correctly. Cam Oliva. Okay. Oliva. What? <laughs> I don't know. Cam Oliva. So, recently, scientists have observed a quasi-satellite. Okay. See, Earth has got five quasi-satellites. You don't have to study the names of all the satellites. Recently, scientists have observed a satellite called as Cam Oliva. I don't know the exact pronunciation, whatever it is. What is a quasi-satellite? See, Cauchy satellite is revolving, it is orbiting the sun, but it has the same orbital speed of the earth. Got it? It is orbiting the sun, but it has got the same orbital speed of the earth. That is Cauchy satellite. See, in statement wise questions, sometimes you will get a question like, what is, like, which one of the following statements correctly define Cauchy satellite? That kind of questions can be expected. So, you should know what is a Cauchy satellite. So, here, Camoliva tracking the Earth's orbit around the Sun could be fragmented from the Moon. So, it is said that it might have be fragmented from the Moon. This quasi satellite may be fragmented from the Moon and it is one of the Earth's quasi satellites. See, totally we have five quasi satellites, not so important. And it was discovered by Pan Stars Telescope in 2006. Pan Stars, it is an initiator. Pan Stars Telescope in 2006 in Hawaii. Okay. The asteroid is roughly the size of Ferris wheel. See, it can be called as a near earth asteroid also. What is ferris wheel? You know giant wheel? Giant wheel. That is called as ferris wheel in physics. Yes. In Eagle and Anon, we have the giant wheel, right? Similar to that, we have ferris wheel. Almost similar size. That is ferris wheel. See, in physics, we call it as ferris wheel. That is why ferris wheel. So, because of its small size, this quasi satellite has been difficult for scientists to study and a little is only known about it. Okay, so you should know there is a quasi satellite. What is a quasi satellite? And the name is Cam Oliva. See, sometimes they will ask you, recently an object was in news called as Cam Oliva. What is it? And they will give you statements. See, it is a quasi satellite. Quasi satellite orbits the sun, but the orbital speed is similar to the earth. Fine. Technical, not so important. Just make a note of the name. Moving on further, we have Gaganyan mission. You might be knowing. The man mission to ISRO, like man mission of ISRO to space is known as Gaganyan. See, Gaganyan system module will have the Indian astronauts, including a women, is included. It is planned to launch in 2020, uh, 21 time, but it is now postponed, okay. After one mission only, it will be launched. And what is important here is, it will be launched by GSLV MK3, GSLV Mark 3. It is a launch vehicle. Any another name, any pet name for this GSLV MK3? Do you know that? GSLV MK3? It is known as the fat boy. Fat, fat. See, it is the biggest launch vehicle that we are having. Fat boy. Fat boy. Okay. Okay. Fat boy. And who is known as the uh, working horse of ISRO? PSLV. Very good. PSLV is known as the working horse. GSLV MK3 is known as the fat boy. Okay, fat boy. So, that is with respect to Gaganyan mission. I don't have to explain it further. The mission is uh, like ongoing. The project is ongoing. When it is launched, it will be important. Next is P172 plus 18. Okay, P172 plus 18. 
what is it p172 plus 18 see it is a coser coser what is a coser yeah it is a high luminosity it is similar to an asteroid it has got very high luminosity maybe in future it may turn into a black hole it is very like it is a glowing star kind of thing it is very highly glowing it is a highly luminosity thing black hole it may future turn into a black hole that is quasar so p172 plus 18 is a quasar the quasar emitted wavelength which had a red shift of 6.8 red shift and all not so important for your examination it took 13 billion years for the quasar slide to reach earth the glowing disk see it is often referred to as a glowing disk uh, around a black hole is 300 times more massive than our sun okay it is almost 300 times more massive than our sun important so quasar p172 plus 18 is a quasar see sometimes they will give match the following kind of thing or are like identify the correctly matched pairs and they will give some asteroid name for example asteroid bennu or like earlier we have camelova similarly the names will be given and you have to identify the match pairs correctly match pairs that kind of questions can be expected in science and technology part so you should note that t172 plus 18 is a coser that's all important see as i mentioned earlier important basics of defense space electronics uh, then electrical basic science basic life science will be discussed in the science and technology part okay it is an individual subject right that all things we will discuss apart this is the brief current affairs regarding science and technology those are not included in that but which happened last year is included here okay we'll have a brief understanding so what is asterix asterix very important it is a space drill space exercise conducted by france the exercise is conducted in space by france so which country is conducting this exercise conducted this exercise it is the france see the exercise is part of france strategy to become the world's third largest space power who is the first largest like first space power usa second russia china like it is often debated india is in fifth or sixth position okay so now currently france is sixth or seventh it is trying to become the third okay you don't have to study i have just asked you and that is asterix see we have some space exercises we have done have you remember do you remember that space uh, space testing or like space uh, exploration or like uh, like space missile space connection have you heard about mission shakti yeah like asat asat okay that is what i meant asat we'll discuss it in the science and technology part so other than that do you know about pratyutma defense system advanced air defense system all these comes under our defense system pad and ad i am just giving you some hints so that we'll discuss in the coming classes also our defense system is important see have you heard about s400 tramf which country russia like we are about to buy it from russia nazam 2 which country it is also an air defense system nazam n a s s a m nazam usa usa okay all these things will be discussed in science and technology i am just hinting out now okay so next is nizar see what is nizar nasa and isro's satellite it's a satellite radar kind of satellite that is nizar it is a suv sized satellite called as nizar so the satellite will be launched in 2022 from satish sawan space center in sriharikota it will scan the globe over 12 days over the course of its 3 year mission so it is a 3 year mission imaging the earth's land ice sheets and icy ice to give an unprecedented view of the planet so nisar is a collaboration of india and isro see brahmos is a collaboration of india russia why the name brahmos the brahmaputra river of india and the moskva river of russia that's why the name brahmos okay we have missiles in brahmos missiles we'll discuss it in later see i'm just hinting out the important topics so that you will be familiarized with the topics that's all moving on further we have crew to mission crew to mission crew to mission is launched by spacex it's a private agency who owns spacex elon musk elon musk okay have you heard about new shepard launch who did that blue origin who is the owner of blue origin jeff bezos okay jeff bezos so here crew to mission four astronauts were launched to the international space station from florida as a part of collaboration of nasa with spacex okay this is the second crew rotation of the spacex crew dragon 
and crew two astronauts will join the members of expedition 65 just keep in mind that crew two mission is done by a private agency okay nasa in collaboration with a private agency so in india currently we are not collaborating with any private agency we have a commercial wing that is there but apart from that isro is single handedly doing the space kind of thing but in usa and all it is now given to the private sector also that is why this blue origin the spacex all these enterprises are coming up okay important spacex elon musk blue origin amazon's founder jeff bezos moving on further osiris rex see this was in news for the last 2 3 years osiris rex it is nasa spacecraft departed from asteroid see it has been departed from asteroid bennu it was aimed at targeting to study asteroid bennu so what is bennu it is an asteroid okay so osiris rex is nasa's first mission to study a near earth asteroid it aims to collect and carry a pristine unaltered sample from an asteroid back to earth for scientific study and the mission is essentially a 7 year long voyage and it will be delivered back in 2023 okay osiris rex osiris rex so which asteroid asteroid bennu which agency nasa fine clear next is pacific see pacific pronunciation is right i guess see the wide area linear optical polarimeter a vital instrument for pacify project see this is an international project it is developed by india okay the wide area linear optical polarimeter is developed by india it is not an indian mission very important it is not an indian mission it is an opto polarimetric survey aiming to measure the linear polarization from millions of stars what is linear polarization and all not important it aims to measure the linear polarization from the millions of star the survey will use high tech optical polarimeters okay and the survey will be conducted concurrently with south african astronaut observatory south africa in southern hemisphere and the shringas observatory in kresh kresh in north so it is an international collaboration okay you won't get questions like that but keep in note that it is not an indian mission very important it is an international mission and wide area linear optical polarimeter is given by who india india okay moving on further next is ambitag what is ambitag what is iot it is a kind of iot device known as ambitag it is a first of its kind of iot internet of things what all comes under internet of things smart homes wearable watches okay everything works on iot internet sensors works on iot so here ambitag it, it is a shaped as a usb it is shaped as a usb portal it is india's first indigenous temperature data logger for cold chain management see cold chain management and all comes under which which ministry kind of thing cold chain cold chain cold storage agriculture sector food processing sector okay so it is uh, given to them ambitag is given to them it generates an alert when the temperature goes beyond a preset limit okay so see here it is a technological innovation hub avad and its startup scratchness agriculture and water technology development hub developed by and the significance it will monitor the temperature of animal semen the device will be made available to all companies involved in covid 19 then the cold chain management and all it will be implemented so what is this particular project called as ambitag ambitag it is a usb kind of thing ambitag moving on further we have marburg virus marburg virus have you heard of marburg virus yes what is it west africa's first case of extremely contagious and deadly virus marburg okay it is a hemorrhagic fever hemorrhagic fever it is a highly virulent disease that cause fever and is carried by bats fruit eating bats it is carried by fruit eating bats and fatality ratio is up to 88% so it was initially detected and see ebola virus this nipa virus all these viruses questions can be expected very important and it family is filoviridae family not so important it outbreaks in marburg and frankfurt in germany so that's why marburg the name marburg see now world health organization has released a notification such that now onwards the diseases won't be named by the country the country of origin this ebola nipa everything is named according to the country of origin so whenever this due to the covid pandemic everyone was naming it as a chinese virus the world health organization come and said that 
now onwards it won't be named by a country name or a village name or something because it is against the reputation or like it is the fame it is an anti fame to the country right so currently it is not doing so but marburg is earlier detected so the name is marburg virus okay marburg virus it is a virus and symptoms fever headache fatigue etc diagnosis polymerase chain reaction enzyme link immuno sorbent assay see elisa we have studied in 12th standard and all for aids testing and all elisa test and transmission it is transmitted from people from fruit bats the virus spread among humans through direct contact with the body fluids also okay so marburg virus is important see just the basics will do you should study about nipah ebola marburg black fever so many fevers were uh, there in last one year current affairs we'll discuss it in life science okay life science apart in science and technology part we'll discuss moving on further the next topic is international relations do you need a break yes okay two more topics are left one is international relation and last one is art and culture 10 topics each so la next one hour 20 topics will be discussed